come along. Hello, I'm <laughs> Angus Len Palmer. I'm a casual hospital worker, a fusion volunteer, and also the comms community chair for them. I'll be highlighting the presence of cannabis does not necessarily correlate to impairment and we'll dive into drug drug reform that is fair, equal and improved public health. In 2016, Australia legalised access to medical cannabis. I'm a prescribed medical cannabis patient, which also doesn't just affect me, but other people I know. <clears throat> the problem, if you take cannabis medicine that contains THC as prescribed, you cannot legally drive. 350k, the approximate number of active legal medical cannabis patients in Australia. That number only continues to grow, same with our medical cannabis industry. 70%, the number of medical cannabis patients like myself that have some THC in their medication and therefore cannot drive legally. 600,000, the approximate number of roadside tests for cannabis each year in Australia. <clears throat> the impact. Safety. There's no evidence that suggests roadside testing has made Australian roads safer. Discrimination. Cannabis is the only legally prescribed medication for which you lose your licence when testing positive for presence, not impairment. Health. Current laws deter patients from medical cannabis and heightens anxiety for those who drive. Current drug driving laws fail to improve road safety, discriminate against medical cannabis patients and impede public health outcomes. Let me be clear. I want our roads to be safe. Any driver who is impaired is a safety risk to themselves and others. The truth is impairment from medical cannabis cannot be tested from a mouse swab. Research shows that the effects of cannabis last as low as, an up, last as, low as two and up to eight hours from consumption, but it can still be detected and tests up to a week later, far beyond the time of impairment. Our laws avoid the truth that impairment can come from an excess or misuse of many legal drugs. This includes other medicines like opiates, benzodiazepines, amphetamines, and alcohol. Research shows that cannabis has a lower crash risk than, crash risk than benzos and opiates. Australian patients who test positive for the presence of these other potentially impairing drugs who can provide evidence of prescription are free to drive because they have a legal medical defence. It should be no different for cannabis patients. We can keep our roads safe by relying on scientific evidence, not outdated laws. Australia is the only country with a widespread random mobile drug test program for detection of THC. In Canada, oral fluids tests such as those used in Australia can be used to confirm a suspected case of drug impaired driving, but only when an officer can first demonstrate impaired driving. If found to have cannabis presence in your oral fluid as the driver WA, the first offence is 1,250 max and three demerits lost. Second and subsequent offences are $2,000 max and six months disqualification minimum. That way, police will issue drivers who test positive for cannabis or if use a roadside drug test with a 24-hour driving ban. The solution, equal rights for legal medical cannabis patients. The government implements Australia-wide uniform drug driving laws to allow for a complete defence to the presence of THC in a driver's oral fluid or blood when the driver has a valid doctor's prescription for a medicine containing THC. The offence does not involve dangerous or reckless driving and an officer cannot establish driver impairment. Victoria has a new trial to begin in September. It seeks to test just how impaired people with medical cannabis in the system are whilst driving. About 70 participants <clears throat> will take part in the trial. Results are due in 2026. In Tasmania, it is legal to drive as long as a person is not impaired by the drug. <clears throat> Dr. Alex Wordock am He is a physician and the former director of the Alcohol and Drug Service at St. Vincent's Hospital in Sydney, Australia. His quote, penalties for roadside drug testing for cannabis are far more severe than for drivers with a positive brand and breath test for alcohol. Also, a driving license is a very severe penalty for those with serious health problems who require frequent medical care and people living in rural areas. <clears throat> I'm a supporter of the cannabis law Reform Alliance and a campaign drive change for their values, truth, respect, growth, and transparency, which Fiona Patton is an ambassador. <clears throat> Thank you for coming to the Fusion Lightning Talks and listening to my presentation. I'm now free to open some <clears throat> questions. All right, we do have time for a potentially two questions. Uh, Miles, if you'd like to go first. 
I heard a rumor that you might be uh, running for government in West Australia. What's your platform going to be and why should people vote for you? <laughs> um, I have a fair few things that I'm interested about. So, yes, I'm a potential candidate and interested in putting my hand forward. So that's, um, I'll cover various topics such as like the cost of living crisis, like our wages and housing and stuff like that. Um, I'm all for nuclear power as well because of the data and evidence and been following it for years. Uh, there's vaping, which I'm, well, I use to help quit smoking myself. And there's so much misinformation and stuff like that about there. Um, oh, there's so much more, but that's pretty much just the top of my head at the moment.